Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be going over my top 36 running back rankings and tiers for week number seven. It's crazy. It's already week seven of the 2023 fantasy football season, but before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, and while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure they do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. So without further ado, let's get into my week number seven running back rankings and tiers for the 2023 fantasy football season. We begin with the S tier at the running back position at number one with DeAndre Swift running back of the Philadelphia Eagles going up against the Miami Dolphins this week at home in Philadelphia on Sunday Night Football. Now as a Miami Dolphins fan, I will fully acknowledge that the Dolphins defense up against the run is absolute booty cheeks. I fully expect DeAndre Swift to take the Miami Dolphins defense straight to pound town. He has been a top 12 running back in three straight games and outside of week one where he wasn't really given the opportunity to get a lot of touches. He's been a top 15 running back every single week. Currently the running back seven on the season in PPR and this matchup up against the Dolphins is a wet dream for DeAndre Swift and I truly believe this is going to be the highest scoring game of the week. Next up we got Kenneth Walker of the Seattle Seahawks going up against the Arizona Cardinals at home in Seattle. Outside of week one Kenneth Walker has been a top 14 running back every single week and there is really no singular best better matchup than going up against the Arizona Cardinals for a running back. I know Geno Smith did have a bit of a disaster class up against the Cincinnati Bengals, but even with Geno Smith struggling, Kenneth Walker was still the RB7 last week, scoring a touchdown or more in four straight games. He has a grand total of six touchdowns in the last four games. I think he adds to that total this week against the Cardinals, and he might mess around and score two or three touchdowns at number three. We have Austin Eckler of the LA Chargers going up against the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City. Now, I know Austin Eckler, Mr. Clean himself, was down bad last week up against the Dallas Cowboys in prime time. Both of those teams had a mid-off back and forth. Dak Prescott, Justin Herbert, both, in my opinion, didn't look tremendous in that game. Eckler, coming back off of the injury, coming out the bye week, looked pretty eh, but at the end of the day, Austin Eckler is still one of the best running backs in the NFL. His pass catching upside is insane, and I expect a a huge bounce back out of Eckler. This week at number four, we have Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders going up against the Chicago Bears in Chicago. Now, the quarterback situation for the Raiders right now is still very much up in the air. I don't think it'll be Jimmy G. I think most likely it'll be Aiden O'Connell. Down week for Josh Jacobs last week against the Patriots, but he has been seeing 17 or more touches over the last four weeks. This is a guy that a couple weeks ago saw 11 targets. They've been targeting him a lot more compared to prior seasons. The matchup against the Bears is great, even if the quarterback situation is pretty topsy-turvy there. In Viva Las Vegas, I still believe very strongly in Josh Jacobs. At number five, we have CMC Dynamite Christian McCaffrey of the San Francisco 49ers going up against the cold-like Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. Now, Christian McCaffrey's health we really have no idea if he's going to play or not. Based upon what I have read, it seems like they are going to take things cautiously. But Shanahan, the team, has said that, hey, there's still a possibility he plays on Monday. If he plays on Monday, I expect him to be limited in some sort of fashion. I don't expect them to force feed him the rock. But up against the Vikings defense, I think even in a limited fashion, McCaffrey could still easily finish as a top five back. To close out the S tier, we have Raheem, the wet dream Mostert of the Miami Dolphins going up against the Eagles in Philadelphia. This is not the best matchup for a running back as the Eagles defense is definitely solid against the run, but this Dolphins offense has really committed to the run this season compared to last year. Mike McDaniel would kind of just fall in love, get infatuated with the fact that they have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, and in clear running situations, they throw the ball. That has not been the case this season. It seems like Mike McDaniel has really got it figured out. He is, in my opinion, one of the best run game gurus in the NFL. Raheem Mostert dropped a 30-point piece on the head top of the Panthers last week, and again, I think it's possible even up against a tougher run defense in Philadelphia. Next up, we move to the A tier. The S tier, all those guys are must-starts. Same thing goes with the A tier. I just don't think they're on the same level of the guys in the S tier. Travis Etienne has been a top two running back 
in back-to-back weeks and goes tonight on Thursday Night Football up against the Saints in New Orleans. To me, it feels like Trevor Lawrence is going to try to gut it out and play. If he does end up playing, we're to see Big Dick Beathard, CG, CJ Beathard as the starting quarterback. ETN is currently the RB3 on the season. And even in the games where the Jaguars were looking limp dick offensively, right? They were coming out on the struggle bus. Travis Etienne was still feasting, so... Even if we see Lawrence kind of struggle here or maybe not play, I still think ETN's going to be just fine. At number eight, the other running back of note in this game, Alvin Kamara of the New Orleans Saints going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars at home in New Orleans ever since Alvin Kamara has gotten out the pen of the suspension that Roger Goodell put him under for the first three games of the season. He's been a top 10 running back every single week, and we've seen him get eight plus touches or eight plus targets, I should say, in two of those three games. The Jaguars' defense is pretty middle of the road. I think this should be another solid game for Kamara. At number nine, we got Isaiah Pacheco going up against the LA Chargers at home in Kansas City. Now, the first two weeks of the season... Pacheco kind of just skidding along, not doing too well. It was like, ah, fuck, maybe I swung and miss on Pacheco. The last four weeks, top 15 running back in every single game. I know that the Chiefs are a team that uses multiple running backs, right? You're going to see Jarek McKinnon. You're going to see Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. But ultimately, Pacheco should be getting 15-plus carries, has the upside to get three or more targets in any given matchup. And we know this Chargers defense isn't very good. And it seems like, at least... The Chiefs are more likely to run it in the red zone compared to what you would probably think they would do. He didn't score last week, but he had three weeks prior to that scoring a touchdown every single game. I definitely like him against the Chargers. At number 10, Bijan Robinson going up against the Bucks in Tampa Bay. Two somewhat down games for Bijan, running back 18 last week against the Commanders, running back 22 the week prior against the Texans. This week he gets the Bucks that are really good against the pass, but I'd say they're pretty so-so up against the run. Arthur Smith has been doing some straight up fucking crack or something because he has been fading away from Bijan, running the ball more with Tyler Algier. I hope that is not the case this week because, man, Arthur Smith has been very annoying. But Bijan's so good that you can't really rank him lower. At number 11, we got A.A. Ron Jones, limited in practice on Wednesday with the hammy. I believe he will end up suiting up. They're coming out of the bye. Even if Aaron Jones is somewhat limited with that hamstring injury, the Broncos' defense is complete and utter dick cheese that I think I could go out there and run for 70 yards against that Broncos' defense. So even with Aaron Jones being banked up, I think this is a clear smash spot for him if he misses AJ Dillon would move into probably the D tier range at running back or maybe even further down because AJ Dillon's been giving a lot of opportunities he's been given a shit ton of opportunities without Eric Jones and he has fallen flat on his face basically every single time except for last time out against the Raiders at number 12 we got Saquon Now, I didn't want to trust Saquon last week against the Bills in Buffalo, and he was the running back 16. It still feels incredibly gross to play Saquon Barkley because we know just how bad this Giants offense is. Saquon was limited yesterday in practice with the ankle. I think he will be good to go on Sunday. Solid matchup against the Commanders. But again, I think this will end up being a lower scoring game. The Giants offense is very flaccid right now. They are not very exciting. Saquon will be fine because he's Saquon Barkley. But if this was Matt Burita and Saquon wasn't playing, there's no way we would be talking about Matt Burita in this highly of a fashion. Next up, we move to the B tier. This is the range where things start to dip off, in my opinion, right? The S, the A tier, you feel very confident in those guys now. I don't hate any of these guys, but this is where we see the downward spiral start to be get. At number 13, we got James Let Him Cook of the Buffalo Bills going up against the New England Patriots in New England. Two down games for James Cook last week, obviously. That offense was terrible against the Giants. Josh Allen looked like he was doing his best Mac Jones or Zach Wilson impression. The guy absolutely reeked to high heaven running back 33 last week for Cook, running back 36 the week prior. But before that, he was in a solid skid as like the running back, or skid I guess would be the wrong term there, a solid stretch of games as like the running back 12 to 18, which felt very just smooth. You never really felt like, hey, what a wonderful time of day. I'm so glad that I started James Cook, but you're also like, hey, James Cook is doing his job as my running back, right? That's kind of how I feel 
he does this week, right? Anywhere from running back 12 to 18 feels pretty safe against a bad Patriots defense on a team that, again, looked so bad, I don't really see how they could do it again. At running back 14, we got Jerome Ford F-150 of the Cleveland Browns going up against the Indianapolis Colts in Indianapolis. Back-to-back weeks as the running back 24. It appears that Deshaun Watson may be good to go based upon the report that I read today. Again, still pretty up in the air. Even if he doesn't play, I still think that the XFL legend P.J. Walker should be fine enough up against the Colts. I know Kareem Hunt went nuclear last week against the 49ers, but I still do strongly believe that Jerome Ford is the guy. At number 15, we have the other Robinson. Meet the Robinsons. Brian Robinson Jr. of the Commanders going up against the Giants in New York, which is actually in New Jersey. If you guys have enjoyed thus far, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button down below. Brian Robinson running back 17 last week up against the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. Brian Robinson's been pretty up or down this season, but at the end of the day, he never really has had the game that truly bent you over the table without the use of lube, right? He's never really had that down astronomical game. He feels pretty safe weekly, and the matchup against the Giants is chef's kiss. Man, you freak. Again, I know the Bills couldn't get it up last week, but I think the Commanders are going to look a lot better in this spot. Moving now to the C tier again, things are starting to get the muddied. The waters are starting to get more muddied, as I should say. It feels like we're entering into Shrek's fucking swamp. We're about to run into Donkey, and that was a terrible Shrek impersonation there. And again, I apologize if you guys can hear the person mowing the lawn. We are officially in mowing the lawn season. When I record videos in the middle of the day, there's always someone mowing their lawn where I live, but I think my microphone's good enough not to really pick it up. So you guys might not even have noticed. You're like, Nick, what the fuck are you talking about? I bring it up anyways. Number 16, Javante Williams of the Broncos going up against the Packers in Green Bay. Hopefully, they give Javante more carries than they did last week against the Chiefs when he was coming off of an injury. The Packers' defense is soft as baby shit up against the run, so I love this spot for Javante, but I will fully acknowledge that we haven't really seen Javante get fully ramped up yet. At number 17, we got Ramondre Stevenson of the Patriots going up against the no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills at home in New England. Now, last week, I finally said, I have had enough with Ramondre Stevenson. I am tired of getting battered by this guy week in, week out. And then he shows up in Viva Las Vegas as the running back six. Now, do I think he's going to do it again? No. But if the team actually feeds this man the ball, which is what I've been calling for all fucking season, then the Patriots will be able to move the ball. The Bills defense, not great against the run. They are also severely banged up. But again, this Patriots team is so bad that it's impossible to trust Stevenson. At number 18 and 19, we got the Colts, Zach Moss, and Jonathan Taylor going up against the Browns. Bad matchup for a running back. The Cleveland Browns defense right now is running on fucking hyper speed. It is insane. The Browns, in my opinion right now, probably have the best defense in the NFL. I don't think on paper they have the best defensive players, but their defensive coordinator, Schwartz, use the Schwartz, is an absolute fucking master mind. Now, I have Moss ranked considerably higher than expert consensus rankings. He's the running back 25. He's my running back 18. He's had back-to-back weeks as a top eight running back. And I get that Jonathan Taylor's there, but they have yet to truly ramp up Jonathan Taylor. Now, Taylor did see more touches last week. I'll give him credit for that. And I think eventually the training wheels are going to come off and Zach Moss is going to go plummeting down into the depths of the ocean where you see those fucked up fish that have like the lantern on your head. If you've ever in my if you're around my age i would say now i guess probably everyone knows this this might just be a tidbit of information that everyone knows right but if you're in my age group in elementary school middle school they always showed this picture of this fish that looked fucked up demented and it had the cool lantern on its head because it's that deep into the ocean Back on to actual fantasy football, not talking about science here because I am not a scientist. I went to college as a history major, so I know a lot about history, not so much about science. So Jonathan Taylor looked all right last week. I'm waiting for the true ramp up. The matchup scares me. 
So, Zach Boss has been just so good that I have to rank him ahead of Jonathan Taylor running back 20. Rashad with two A's white going up against the Atlanta Falcons at home in Tampa. Now, we talk about this basically every single week. Rashad White is great. They're great. Tony the Tiger, right? Frosted Flakes win. He plays up against bad defenses, up against tougher spots like the Lions, like the Eagles. He is going to be on the struggle bus. He is going to struggle. This week, he gets the Falcons, a pretty middle-of-the-road matchup. So I think this will be a solid game for Rashad White. Now, we move to the D tier, running backs 21 through 27. And it is very evident, once you get here, that a lot of running backs are very banged up and that the bye weeks are really heavily lifting like that fucking statue of the guy lifting the boulder here. It's lifting guys up that should be nowhere close to the top 20, but they are because of six teams being on by running back 21. Can you do something for me? Roshan Johnson still in the concussion protocol on Thursday or on Wednesday. Today is Thursday. We still don't have the practice report on that. I am very nervous that he's not going to play. If he doesn't play, then Dante Foreman will move up to this spot. Wet dream matchup against the Raiders. I genuinely believe when Roshan plays, he has the juice. I don't think Foreman has any juice. I think Roshan Johnson right now averaging 4.9 yards per attempt. I think this guy has the skills to pay the bills. The question is, will he be there in a great matchup against the Raiders? At number 22, we got Alexander Madison going up against the 49ers at home in Minnesota. We have seen Madison basically be a staple inside the top 24 over the last four games of the season. This matchup, though, would have him probably closer to like running back 28-29 if there wasn't six teams on by and if there wasn't so many injuries at the running back position. I am scared of the matchup, but I think... Just like last week, he saw seven dump-offs. I think he's going to see a shit ton of dump-offs here because without Justin Jefferson, Kirk O'Chains is going to be nervous. He's going to be shivering down his spine like he saw a spooky, scary skeleton. And I think Alexander Matheson will be just fine. Number 23, we got Kareem Hunt going up against the Colts in Indy. Now, I don't think what he did last week is going to happen again. 12 rushes, 47 yards, three targets, three receptions, 24 receiving yards, and a touchdown. I think Jerome Ford is going to be the guy. But what I will tell you is that maybe this was an effort that hey week five's the buy coming out the buy we're gonna look to increase kareem hunt's workload in a great fashion now do i think that's guaranteed to be the case no maybe it's just the case that they want to use him more because pj walker was under center and he wants that safety net next to him that is very plausible right but there's also a chance that they really just wanted to ramp him up out the bye week and that Jerome Ford, his value is going to start tanking and Hunts is going to start rising. So I'm kind of almost trying to play the middle here. I don't think I have Jerome Ford ranked too highly and I don't think I have Kareem Hunt ranked too low. Gun to the head, if it was my choice, I think that Ford is the guy still. But again, I am starting to get a little bit sweaty about this situation. At number 24, we got Jalen Warren of the Steelers going up against the Rams in LA. But before we break down Jalen Warren and the rest of the running backs all the way up until running back 36, I would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends and our sponsor over at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play NFL pick'em in the whole entire universe. And Underdog has a great offer for you guys today. But first, I want to explain how Underdog's pick'em works. So you're going to need to select at least two players from two different teams. So we're going to start with Thursday Night Football, Jags at Saints. We're going to go with Travis Etienne higher than 65 and a half rushing yards. Travis Etienne has been on fire. Now there aren't a lot of choices out just yet because I'm recording this on Monday night after the Cowboys Chargers game. There will be more offerings as the week goes on. And we're going to match that with our other pick here of Jared Goff higher than 241 and a half passing yards on Sunday up against the Ravens defense. If both of these hit, it will pay out three times your entry fee. 
if you do three different picks, it's six times your entry fee, four picks is 10 times, and five picks is 20 times. Obviously, all of your picks need to hit for it to pay out. If you are new to Underdog Fantasy and live in one of these states listed on your screen right now, use promo code NOTORIOUS or click on the link in the video description for a first match deposit bonus of up to $100. If you deposit $100, they give you an additional $100, $50, additional $50, $25, additional $25. The minimum deposit on Underdog Fantasy is $10, and if you have a gambling problem, please make sure that you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back on into things, Jalen Warren running back 24 in the D tier. Warren has been outplaying Najee Harris all season long. The problem is Matt Canada is a bone-headed dunce. He's a fucking idiot. At the Pittsburgh Penguins' first game of the season, they were chanting, Fire Canada. Steelers fans are fed up, and I might be even more fed up. This man is holding this offense down. Like the rocks they used to murder that man in, what was that book called? The Crucible? Is that the book? You know what I'm talking about? The Salem Witch Trials? You know what we're talking about, right? Where they squish the fat dude with the rocks? That's what they're doing to this fucking offense, man. Fuck you, Matt Canada. You sorry bastard. Tired of it. I am tired of it. Jayla Warren's upside severely handicapped by the fact that Matt Canada's too dumb to give him more touches than he is getting right now. At number 25 and 26, we got the Lions. Now, I know people be thinking, Nick, how in the world could you have Craig Reynolds ranked higher than Jameer Gibbs? It is because. Now, I don't even think Craig Reynolds is guaranteed to play. But if Craig Reynolds plays, Dan Campbell and this team have shown zero will to truly give the workload to Jameer Gibbs, even when Montgomery has missed. Now, maybe you could say, oh, Nick, that's because Gibbs is such a young back. I don't give a fuck. Because if you draft some guy in the first round, right, you, you literally celebrate like it's the last, like, like World War II was won, right? You celebrate like the night Osama bin Laden was assassinated. That's what it looked like in the war room for the Lions. And still, and still, they don't give the ball to Jameer Gibbs. It's so frustrating. Craig Reynolds isn't good at all. He's not. Jameer Gibbs clears him. But when push comes to shove, I know damn right, Dan Campbell's probably going to screw and Ben Johnson are going to screw Jameer Gibbs over. But if you want to rank Jameer Gibbs ahead of Craig Reynolds, I wouldn't call you that crazy. To close out the D tier, Jeff Wilson Jr. Sounded like Mike Tyson here. Going up against the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. Jeff Wilson was looking like he was going to be back, but then Mike McDaniel was like, hell no, and didn't play him last week. I guess saving him from himself, they were like, all right, we're playing the Panthers. Chris Brooks, Salvin Ahmed, good enough with Raheem Mostert. This week against the Eagles, he's like, okay, we need to give Jeff Wilson some touches. I like this spot here. I think the Dolphins are going to score a bunch of points. The workload of Jeff Wilson is definitely in question, but I would have to think without Chris Brooks and with Salvin Ahmed being the backup, not Devin Two Chains, I would have to think Wilson gets a decent amount of touches. Wilson averaged... Damn near five yards per attempt last season. Moving now to the E tier, Keontae Ingram of the Arizona Cardinals going up against the Seahawks in Seattle. Keontae Ingram did not look good at all last week. In my opinion, he looked slow. Now, he did average around four yards a carry, so I'll give him it. That's not terrible, but to me, he doesn't look good. I think Imari DiMarcado looks better than him, but we have basically made clear that Gannon, fire the cannons, wants to use Ingram over DiMarcado. So this is what we get against Seattle. Number 29, Najee Harris. You know he's going to get the touches because, again, Matt O. Canada is an idiot. But even with getting more touches than Jalen Warren, he is about as effective as using a Snickers bar as a condom. So when push comes to shove here, Najee Harris has to be ranked in the top 30. But he's just not good. At number 30, Jaleel McLaughlin going up against the Packers at home in Denver. The touches drastically decreased once Williams came back. I think he has the juice to have a huge game. But again, he's going to have to get his six carries, two catches, eight total touches, take one of those to the crib to be worthy of a start in fantasy. Running back 31, Latavius Murray going up against the Patriots at home in Buffalo. This would have been a Damian Harris revenge game. Sadly, Damian Harris gets hurt in a 
drastic fashion. I hope he's okay. There was rumors that Leonard Fournette was going to potentially show up in Buffalo. That has not been the case. Latavius now the running back two behind James Cook. That does make me feel a lot more confident in Latavius, though, because now there is no Damian Harris to kind of muddy the waters as the two guys behind James Cook. So I like Murray decent amount. I think he could score this week. He has two touchdowns on the season. So that kind of gets you to be a top 32 back. Now to the F tier again. If you're starting these guys, you need to send a prayer up to the heavens that these guys pay off. Now, we talked about Donta Foreman, who's running back 36. Now we're going a little bit out of order. But if Roshan can't play, Donta Foreman moves up to where Roshan is. For Jordan Mason, if McCaffrey does that play, now I'm not throwing Jordan Mason up to running back five where McCaffrey is, but he would definitely move up the rankings as well. Zach Evans running back 32. Now, this Rams team has signed every ragtag group of running backs that you could think of. Any running back that you have heard of in the last couple seasons, these randos, they're on the, the Rams. They got Henderson back. They've got, I believe, Miles Gaskin. They got Zach Evans. My belief would be they would probably go with Zach Evans, but it could easily be Darrell Henderson. This seems like a trap. It's a trap at the running back position. Number 33, Tyler Algier. Now, for some reason, we keep seeing Tyler Algier get touches. Last week, he out-touched Bijan Robinson, but Bijan actually does shit with the touches, so hopefully Arthur Smith figures out to stop using Algier, but he probably won't. Jordan Mason, we already talked about, running back 34. If McCaffrey doesn't play, I think he'll be the guy. Number 34, Gus Bus Edwards going up against the Lions. Lions defense scares the shit out of me. Edwards is in a clear committee with Justice Hill. Running back 36, again, Dante Foreman. If Roshan doesn't play, you have to move Dante Foreman up. I kind of shit on him all week. He wasn't as bad as I said, but again, I still don't think he's on the same level as Roshan Johnson, but he does got a great matchup against the Raiders. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you didn't up enjoying, hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that like button as well. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. And if you'd like to get my rankings that are about to be uploaded, very, very soon, as well as an answer to any questions you might have. Make sure to check out the Patreon for $7.50. Link in the video description. I love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great day, and as always, good boy!